Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Meeplus and this is Literally Graphic! And today we are going back to an initial thoughts video that I posted just last year, namely Satoko and Nada Volume 2, with story and art by Yupachika and script advice from Marie Nishimori. Check out the initial video here to learn more. Not the most used content warning in the world, but despite generally enjoying the framing of this comic, Nada's generally conservative practice of Islam did keep reminding me of my own conservative Christian upbringing. The two are obviously very different, so that is just an emotional thing, but if you too are still apparently recovering from a more conservative religious experience, this might not be the series to enjoy right now. But since I did have this reaction, I was reminded to point out that any single point of diverse representation is not represented, uh, representative of the entire group. From my own limited experience, Nada's character appears to make sense given that her home country is Saudi Arabia, but Muslims come in a whole rainbow of diverse races, genders, sexualities, nationalities, and politics. This volume also introduced a plot where Nada becomes engaged in an arranged marriage, not having met her fiancé yet. This brought to my mind all the times that conservative feminists and their supporters try and say that feminism has progressed too far in, quote, the West, and that anyone protesting in North America should be really concerned about the, quote, barbaric practices of other people. This is a bad take. Arranged marriages can work as much as any other sort of marriage between two consenting adults. Child marriage is actually a huge problem in conservative Christian groups in the so-called United States because age of consent laws in many states are under 18. With a plethora of loopholes that allow parents to entrap their children, they at least think are female, I'm not sure, some ID otherwise probably, with older cisgender heterosexual men. And rant. The thing, the one thing that started bugging me about the series that I couldn't shake was the fact that one of the few things that these three countries have in common is how imperialist they have been and mostly continue to be. Obviously, that's the government, not every single person. Gender is not so central to this second volume as the gendered nature of Nada's experience has already been explained. There's only one thing the two female identified characters avoided, which was one co-ed event they couldn't attend very cheerfully as they are homebodies. The only uh, observation of sexuality in this volume is that Nada, as a person who IDs as a woman, gets engaged to a person who apparently IDs as a man. While certainly something people do, do they really have to rub our noses in it? But I jest. The comic is fairly, quote, colorblind, choosing so far not to highlight the kinds of experiences any of the characters might have in America due to their perceived race or even religion. While overall this is a light and humorous comic devoid of real consequences, I did feel like the one sort of flaps representation, so, to so Taco needs to get a job, was treated fairly flippantly, much like the total lack of disability versus ability representation. I'm never surprised, but I've promised to bring it up to remind myself and you just how little these realities are touched on and or treated seriously. Looking back at my initial thoughts review, I see I rated the volume 4 out of 5 stars. Trying to avoid politics, I feel like this series is leaning into some very liberal politics that make me very uncomfortable. That said, I still think that the premise of this comic and the way the characters are brought together is very innovative and something I would like to see repeated by other creators with their own twists. I uh, also obviously think that the increased representation of Muslim people in English comics, just thinking of my own people, is super important. I will be rating this volume 3 out of 5 stars. Bye y'all, keep reading, and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13 also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.